This video explains how to compare two data objects using the all equal function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create three different data objects, as you can see in lines two to 10 of the code. So the first data object is created in line two. And after running this line of code, a new data object called X is appearing at the top right of RStudio. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see that we have created a vector object containing 10 integer values ranging from one to 10. Then the second data object is created in line five of the code. So after running this line of code, another data object called y1 is appearing at the top right. And after printing this data object to the bottom in the console, you can already see that this data object contains exactly the same values as our first data object x. And then I'm creating a third data object running lines eight and nine of the code. So after running these lines of code, a data object called y2 is created. And if we print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console, you can see that we have created another vector object containing 10 elements. However, these 10 elements are slightly different compared to our data objects X and Y1. So if we apply the all equal function to our two first data objects X and Y1, as you can see in line 12 of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the logical indicator true is returned. And this tells us that the data objects X and Y1 are exactly the same. However, if we apply the all equal function to our data objects X and Y2, as you can see in line 14 of the code, the output mean relative difference 0.014 is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And this tells us that those two data objects are different. However, you can already see based on the mean relative difference that this difference is not very high. So one advantage of the all equal function is that it also allows you to specify a certain tolerance level. And we can do that as you can see in lines 16 and 17 of the code. So in line 16 of the code, I'm using basically the same syntax as in line 14. However, then in addition to that, I'm also specifying the tolerance argument. And in this case, I'm setting this argument to be equal to 0.1. So after running lines 16 and 17 of the code, you can see that the logical indicator true is returned, even though our two data objects X and Y2 are not exactly the same, but due to the tolerance that we have specified, the all equal function still returns the logical indicator true. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.